start creating my tasks. So these come in uh, from Excel or another source. I'll just create them manually. And on the right hand side, I've got my cost plan, which we've just been looking at. And I'll create my tasks and then we'll allocate the cost plan item. So the naming is going to be very, very similar, but um, homework. So I'm going to have a separate task for each of the estimating items which I have. Obviously, you can group these things together and have a higher level schedule. And then we just drag and drop uh, from the estimate. So we kind of take that resource data and all the cost data and actually put it into, uh, put it into the schedule. So I allocate these to the tasks. And now if I open the tasks, now I have to decide, okay, what is the um, duration driver from those estimating items? Uh, so you know, very typically it's always going to be the labor if it's excavation and it may well be the machine. Um, so I have to tell it that and I'll say that, okay, the phone work counter is going to lead. So for every hour which is in the estimate, I'm going to use one hour in the schedule. So you can put an override in there, you know, if the scheduler isn't quite happy with what's in there, he can put a factor into uh, make allowance for the actual schedule part. So I'll do that with each, and then we create locations. So I change my workflow now to the OBS manager. As I say, we can create what we call location systems. Uh, so the substructure, the superstructure, the exteriors could all have their own and the interiors, there's as many as you like. Um, it's always better for scheduling if, if people can share um, as much as possible a common work, workflow around the building. Uh, it helps you to optimize the tasks. Um, but you know, we can cater for as many that is required. I'm not going to do it on this just because it's a very simple example. Uh, so if we create the location systems, then uh, we need to create the physical locations. So I've got my project here. We start with a, a complete bounding box, and then I'm going to put that in block plan view. And we've got some tools in here. We can snap to certain areas. So I'll snap to the center and break it that way. And, and I will get another way as well. I'll do something maybe a little bit more decorative, just so you can see when we have the quantities in the schedule. So once we've done it, these are the locations we're going to have. Then we just need to refresh the quantities, recalculate them uh, per location. And now if I open the tree, these are, these are ones that are grayed out. Um, they were just the other side of the line which I cut. It knows there's nothing there, so I just tidy those up. And then you can see each of the locations, and I can isolate them. And these will be, uh, now we have the quantities of everything that's required in those locations, which will draw the schedule. I'll just give them a bit of a naming structure. So once you've created your location tree, uh, then we're ready to actually start planning. And uh, this is our, our control software. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with um, Flowland, this is a different way of representing the information that you would see in Gantt. Um, so we have the locations that we've created. Uh, you can see the A, B, C, D down here on the left hand side. We have the timeline across the top. And because this information has um, come from the actual estimate and the locations that we've uh, set up, these lines are based on the quantities in the schedule. Okay. Um, each of the tasks are starting today, they're all starting at the same 
uh, the same time in the same place, which you know isn't going to work. So I need to add logic. Um, just for those that aren't familiar, here are the same tasks represented in Gantt. Um, again, there's no logic. Uh, so first, I'm going to go to the resource registry. And the scheduler could use his own um, resource data and crews and inputs. Or we can say, I want to use the ones that are actually in the estimate as a starting point. And we can update this. That brings in the, uh, the ones that I've just created. And then we can add some logic. So whereas in a, a normal Gantt schedule, um, your logic you have to create for every single location or copy and paste it from location to location. The way this works is slightly differently and that if I just say that form work always goes before the rebar, before the concrete for these partic this particular element, wherever that was found in the uh, building it would automatically add that logic. Okay, so you can see the logic is now added in here. And if I go to the flow line, uh, so something that you can't really see is the um, how good or bad that schedule is in here, especially when you've got a huge schedule with lots of different uh, sheets and pages. Uh, it's not that easy to track. In the flow line view, uh, I can see that the productivity of um, this task and well, all these tasks are all completely different. So we tried to balance it as much as possible. And if we do that, instead of just sliding a line from left to right, and just, it just lets us do it, you know, and typically people would say, that'll take about two weeks, that'll take about two weeks. There's some logic involved. Um, so we would normally set up the size of crew uh, in here. If I open the tasks, um, here we would say, OK, there's, I don't know, there's three people in that crew. And then this would be the number of crews. So if I change that. Uh, you can see the line changes as well. So it's now dividing the number of hours in the estimate into the people in the crew. And I still want to balance them more than that. So if I try to uh, put them on a similar picture, it'll now tell me that, OK, I now would need three crews to achieve what I've just uh, tried to do. And it'll say, do you want to do that by adding three crews? Or can you change the production factor or consumption? I don't know, maybe you can, maybe you've got a big whip, um, but I'm going to add some more crews here. Um, so it gives you that chance to, you know, can I actually get three crews next week or next month? Can I get them all here at the same time? Uh, so it forces you to um, re really consider what you can and cannot do instead of just sliding a bar. So if we get them all similar, and then we can go um, into here and we're going to establish body simulation. So the simulation is just a, a free byproduct of using the combined estimate and scheduling. So let's create a group. And we've got our three simple groups. Yeah, and I'll just use the same names. And we can choose the color. So when this task is actually occurring in the playback, this is the color which will be represented. And we could choose transparency of how it looks as well. And also the behavior. So is this um, something which is being built? Or is it something which is currently there and it's going to be demolished? Or is it temporary, like a crane or um, site offices or things? So we can do a complete simulation with logistics. And then we allocate the tasks to the groups. Okay, and then we can watch the fruits of our labor. From creating the schedule and the estimate linked together.
I won't play it all the way through. It is quite a boring one when there's only one element. But I thought it was important to sort of go through at a very, very basic level so you can see the steps that are involved with each of the modules.